Attention all LEGO Mindstorms gamers. The new LEGO Mindstorms robot inventor allows you to remotely control your robot with third party controllers like the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One controllers. And that is what we're learning about today. How's it going everyone? My name is Kyle and I'm here with yet another exciting video for the Builder Dude Nation. My YouTube channel is all about teaching you everything you've ever wanted to know about LEGO Mindstorms. So without further ado, let's get to making some remote control robots. I have a fresh project open in the Mindstorms app and I'm just about ready to start teaching you how to use this PlayStation 4 controller to control your robot. However, there's just a little bit of setting up that we need to do beforehand. And the first step of that, of course, is connecting this controller. The way the connection scheme works is the controller actually connects to your smart device. So either your phone or your tablet. And then your smart device, of course, as you know already, connects to your robot. So you can think of the smart device as the middleman between the controller and the actual robot. So to get this controller connected, go to your smart device's Bluetooth settings. So I'm going to go into the settings menu, Bluetooth, and then on the PlayStation 4 controller, hold down the PS button and the share button at the same time for a few seconds. And after a few seconds, you'll get a pairing request. So this Bluetooth pairing request means this controller wants to connect to my iPad and I will allow it and I will click pair. And now we'll see that the DualShock 4 controller is indeed connected and we're ready to start using it. If we go back into the Mindstorms app, we'll see it says wireless controller connected about 38 times. That's because it's a little bit glitchy. Again, this is a beta feature, which means there will be a little bit of bugs to work on, um, but that's okay. The next step is we need to get the API, that is the code blocks for receiving input from this controller into our project. Because if you look at the sidebar on the left, we actually don't have it yet. So if you go to the extreme bottom left corner where the extensions button is, we'll click on that. And this is where we have the option to add a whole bunch of different extensions. But we're looking for the one for either the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One controller, whichever one you happen to be using. And that's under the experimental section. So in my case, I'm using a DualShock 4. So I'll click on the teal add button and it says extension is added. We go back into the project and scroll down. We actually have all of the programming blocks for the DualShock 4 in the palette and ready to go. The first thing I wanna show you how to use is the D-pad, which are these arrow buttons in the left part of the controller. And the easiest way to use this is to use events. So we'll drag one out here and we'll say, when the D-pad button is pressed and you have the choice of up, down, left, right, or no button pressed at all, and you also have the choice between pressed and released, but I'm gonna start by programming a case where the top button is pressed. And I'm gonna use this to control the direction of my robot's auxiliary motor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go into the blue motors tab and say, start the motor in motor B, turning one direction when the D-pad button is pressed up. And it's also just a good step to go back to the beginning and define the motor's rotation speed that you're interested in. So set the motor B rotation speed to I'll say 100% because this is just the free motor I have on my robot. And we need to program a few more events. So go back into the DualShock tab and get another D-pad block out. So we'll say when the D-pad down button is pressed, we'll have the motor spin in the opposite direction, which makes sense. So start motor B, but have it spin in the other direction. And now we actually need one more case. And if we don't add this, the motor will just spin forever. Go into the DualShock API one more time and select the case where no button is pressed on the D-pad. And in this case, we want the motor to actually stop spinning. So we're gonna stop motor B. And this is the program all finished up. This little example is finished. And then when you're ready, you can go ahead and run it on the robot. But you'll notice if you click the teal button in the bottom right corner, in the top right corner, you'll get a notification that asks you to switch the hub to streaming mode and just go ahead and oblige it. So just click switch. And now your controller should work to control your robot. So let's see what that looks like. That was a real simple example of using the D-pad to control your robot. But as you probably noticed, there's a lot more than just those buttons on this controller. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to make a tank style remote control driving using the L2 and R2 buttons on the controller. And the nice thing about this is that these buttons are proportional. So the harder you press them, you can program the robot to drive faster. 
And of course, with the tank style program, the left button will control the left wheel's power and the right button will control the right wheel's power. So let's go ahead and program that up. We're gonna need to go into the DualShock menu, of course, and program a few conditions based on the state of the L2 and the R2 buttons. So we're gonna drag out this block that's close to the bottom here, and this is an event block. When you click on this first dropdown, it gives you an option of a whole bunch of buttons that are on the controller. Like I said, we're interested in L2 first. So when the L2 button is pressed, and we're actually gonna want one more of those blocks that corresponds to the L2 button being released. So we'll drag both of those out here. And let's start by programming the easier of these two cases. So when the button is released, we just want that motor to stop. Now the motor that controls my left wheel is in port A. So I'll just drag out this block that says stop the motor in port A. Now when the motor is pressed comes the interesting part. So this is where we're going to program the motor to respond to changes in pressure on the L2 button and change its speed. What we wanna do in that case is we wanna drag out a loop, but it's a specific type of loop. So we want this to repeat until a certain condition is met. And that condition, as you could probably guess, is when the L2 button will be released. So go back into the DualShock menu and use this kind of hexagon shaped block. Set this to L2, sorry, set this to L2 when the L2 button is released, and that'll be the condition to exit the loop. But for every other time while we're in the loop, we want to read the pressure value on this L2 button and update the motor speed, then run the motor at that speed. So we're gonna drag out two motor blocks, one that sets the motor in port A speed to some percentage of power, and the other which just tells motor A start moving in that direction. And the one last component, of course, is we want to be reading the pressure on the L2 button and setting that as the motor's power. And now we have proportional control over the left wheel's power. One last slight modification I'll make, and this is optional depending on whether your robot needs it, but I'm gonna take out an operator, so the multiplication operator, and I'm actually going to put the L2 pressure in the second field. And in the first field, either I'll type the number positive one, or I can type the number negative one. And this will allow me to flip the direction of the motor when it receives an input from L1. So if I, type in a negative one, it's going to mirror the motor's power. And for whatever reason, my robot, the way it's built, just happens to need this on the left side, that I need to mirror the power on the left side of the robot. So now that this is all done, we've programmed everything we need to control the left wheel of the robot. Now, of course, we have a whole other wheel of the robot. Thankfully, we could just duplicate this code and then change a few values. So hold your finger over this assembly of code blocks at the very top, click on duplicate, and we have the whole brick of code all over again. And then we can go through and change all of the references to the left side to references to the right side. So instead of L2, we want R2, and we're gonna change, everywhere it says L2, we're gonna change that to R2, but also we need to change the motor port. So I don't know about you guys, but my right drive motor is in port C. That could vary for your own robot, just configure that correctly. Once you've replaced all of the references to the left side and changed them to right side, you might also need to change the mirror factor on this again. So for my specific robot, like I said, I only need to mirror it for the left side. So the left I'll enter a negative one, the right I'll enter a positive one. And then of course we also need to duplicate this little bit down here, which tells the right motor to stop when R2 is released. So when R2 is released, just stop the motor in port C. So let's test out this piece of code right here. Hey, what's that? John Wick is in grave danger and he needs your help. He needs you to subscribe to this channel to save him. So don't wait, click that red button down below and you can save John Wick right now. The last example I'm gonna show you is in my opinion, one step cooler than the one that I just showed you. And we're gonna use one of these joysticks to control driving the robot around, which will have full proportional control in a whole bunch of different directions. Now, normally making a joystick program might be a little bit tricky for LEGO Mindstorms, but thankfully all of the hard work has been done for us already. And that's been done for us in some of the LEGO designed model blocks. These are the programming blocks that come with the models that LEGO designed. So things like Blast or Tricky or something like that. And most of them already have a joystick remote control implemented. By the way, if you don't find this model blocks section in your left sidebar, what you can do is again, go into the extensions menu and then add the extension for model blocks and click that green button there.
Once you have that extension enabled, take the remote control block from one of the models. I like using the one from Blast and drag that out and then also drag out an infinite loop. So we'll loop this forever and drag that in here. The next step is we're gonna read off the positions from the analog stick and plug them into this remote control block that we just imported. And we're gonna need the blocks that read the sensor position. So we're gonna need the oval shaped blocks. So when the left stick's X axis is doing something, it's going to plug that value into the expression wherever it is. And we can plug that into the left side and then get one more for the right side. So when the left stick and make sure the axes match. So the first one is for the X axis. The second one is for the Y axis. And believe it or not, this remote control program is ready to roll. So let's see what it looks like in action. You might have been quick to notice that the Y axis, that is the vertical or up and down axis on my controller, actually makes the robot drive in the wrong direction. But thankfully, this is pretty easy to fix. We can mirror that axis. So what we'll do is go into the Operators tab, drag out the Multiplication Operator, and then modify the axis that was driving in the wrong direction. So take out this block right here and put it in the second field. And then in the first field, this should look familiar from before, type in negative one, and this will mirror all of the inputs on the Y axis to get the robot to drive in the right direction. And then once you've done that, plop that back into the Y axis field, and we're ready to roll with the modified program. So let's see what this looks like. We've only just explored the tip of the iceberg of this remote control feature. And in the next few weeks, I'm gonna bring it even further with exciting projects of my own, which may or may not include a robot to save John Wick. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and tune in for the next few weeks for my own projects. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you around.